Edward Pace is the director of the Africa Research Institute and the author of a fascinating new book called Youthquake, Why African Demography Should Matter to the World. It's very sober, very fact-based, non-ideological, cool, calm and collected, uh, and written by a chap who's lived in Eritrea and Kenya and loves Africa. Uh, so we can leave all the, oh, let's head for the hill stuff uh, for another night and just try and stay cool, calm and collected about this uh, situation. Uh, so, Edward, I'll, I'll start with the subtitle of the, the book. In a nutshell, why should African demographics uh, matter to the world? Uh, good evening. Thank you, Mark, very much for having me on the show. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not a, a demographic determinist. We'll come back to that. So I don't mm -hmm. think it's, it's actually possible to uh, say with any certainty exactly what the consequences will be for migration, for example, from uh, Africa's really extraordinary population growth over the last uh, 70, 80 years. Uh, but one thing I would say is that sheer weight of numbers will determine that Africa has a far more central position in the world. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, it is... Um, as good as certain that one in four uh, people in the world by 2050 will be African. And at that stage, you, you hear talk of a, of a birth dearth in, from certain directions, but at that stage, uh, Africa will be accounting for 40% of global births and one third of the global youth population, that's those in between 15 and 24, will be African. So uh, the sheer weight of numbers, to me, says that the marginalization of Africa, which continues, for example, in, in mainstream media uh, in the West, uh, really needs a, a big rethink. Um, just to take two instances, two recent instances, um, Africa has been largely marginalized in the way that the COVID-19 outbreak ha has been handled by uh, developed countries. Um, another uh, example of this is that uh, African countries were by and large bit part players at COP26, uh, despite the fact that Africa is frequently said to be uh, one of the continents that will be uh, most affected by climate change. Well, uh, before we do too much generalizing about Africa this and Africa that, one of the interesting aspects of your book is you do point out that uh, in, in North Africa, essentially the Maghreb Arab uh, North Africa, uh, fertility rates have declined. Likewise, in South Africa and those nations within its orbit, uh, fertility rates uh, have declined. But you have uh, in the middle, in East and West and Central Africa, you have a situation where all the predictions that Africa would follow Asia, oh yeah, sure, we were all scared about Asian birth rates a couple of generations back and then they all fell down. Uh, but in, they're not falling down in East, West and Central Africa. And they account, as you say in your book, for a huge chunk of the growing population on Earth. Those people, I, I've met, you know, I'm, I spent some time with Gambians in Germany who were pretending to be Syrian immigrants to uh, Frau Merkel's Germany five years ago. They're very nice people. Uh, they came there essentially for economic reasons. They were 32-year-old Gambians, happy to pretend to be, with a, a, a nudge and a wink, 17-year-old Syrians, because Germans didn't care about that. But they were going there because there was no economic opportunity in the Gambia, and they thought there was in Europe. Uh, how, how big can that trend get? Well, <clears throat> it's absolutely true that there are different uh, fertility uh, trends through uh, the different regions of Africa. And one of the things I sought to do with this book um, was to actually look at the many different trends 
and to stress test, as it were, uh, the 12 fastest growing countries uh, in population terms, uh, really to see whether uh, the opinions of the greatest demographers um, it, 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 around the world were correct about uh, where the growth was coming from and if it would come. Um, so, yes, in, in northern Africa, the fertility rate is now down to uh, around three births per woman, total fertility rate. And in southern Africa, uh, the fertility rate is approaching replacement level between two and two and a half births. Mm. Uh, and in the middle, as you rightly say, there are, there are uh, regions, three regions, where the growth uh, continues at a very high level. And, uh, you know, by 2050, both eastern Africa and Western Africa will each have populations uh, larger than that of, of, of greater Europe. Um, now, these are, these are big figures. Um, what one needs to do additionally, which I've tried to do in the book, is look at what it means to these individual countries. I mean, this is an Africa-centric book. Uh, if European audiences, uh, other Western audiences want to read it, that's, that's marvellous. But it is, I, I was really more interested in portraying how the issue of population growth has been regarded within Africa and what it actually means to the individual countries. Because even if we're talking about migration, uh, this is a critical part of the story. And actually, you ask, uh, you, you rightly say, where, where do the figures, where will the figures go? Well, you know, at the moment, and I can't say I'm not a migration expert, but at the moment, uh, migration within the continent, uh, as a result of the pressures that you have rightly uh, listed, uh, whether they be economic or whatever, at the moment, migration within the continent it is far, far greater than uh, migration outside the continent. If you look at Europe at the moment, um, even after uh, <clears throat> you know, various sort of migration crises, um, inverted commas, uh, the number of African, uh, by, Africans by birth within uh, the EU is somewhere around 10 million. Now, I'm not seeking to... Um, to, to make nothing <clears throat> of the pos prospect or to, uh, to poo-poo the prospect that there will be uh, continued and possibly greater migration. <clears throat> but I think one of the ways in which uh, we deal with this is to encourage greater knowledge about Africa itself. I mean, for example, if I go and talk to a school in this country all, and I ask the, the children for, you know, to, to, to come up with a word that uh, they associate with Africa, uh, they will mostly be uh, fairly depressing words like uh, fighting or war or, or, or poverty, uh, this sort of thing. Now, <clears throat> I'm not denying that those are part of the story within individual African countries, but by no means within all of them. Uh, but we need to actually look at other things that are going on in order to have a more realistic story. Migration uh, is a very important issue. It is a very, very contentious issue. But if uh, uh, people are uh, discussing migration from Africa, um, I would say that it would help um, if they actually understand more, if we understand more about the societies that are the other side of the Mediterranean Sea. Well, you, you make a, a very good point with, with respect to that, because, uh, you know, from Germany's point of view, one million migrants in uh, 2015, 2016 seemed like a big deal. But actually, when you look at your book, that's that uh, an increase of one million people comes along every two months. 
in Nigeria. So it's a it's a drop in the ocean from the African point of view, even if it seems huge from the the European uh, view. What is uh, what is the reaction to this book from the political class? Because it's a huge, you know, people, a few dozen uh, British civil servants governed the whole of Sudan until 1956. Uh, with, a, with a population differential like this, we couldn't be in the imperialism game anymore, even if we wanted to, because the population differentials have shifted so much in such a short space of time. Do you, do you find that the political class, not just in London, but in the West generally, give any thought to this? Well, <clears throat> this is a very good question. Um, I mean, the book has only been out a month. Um, and so uh, th there's been a limited time uh, for reaction. But uh, I would have to say that an, uh, an almost uh, universal reaction from those who have reacted has been that, that there is no discernible uh, uh, bias or ideology on my part. And uh, I'm very pleased to hear that because that is how I wrote it. Um, uh, that was my aim when writing it. Um, the, uh, my main issue is to get... Uh, people to uh, focus more on what is going on in Africa, because um, that is a crucial part um, of dealing with the issue of future migration. I don't think that, I, I think the whole debate about uh, migration is very, very restricted at the moment. There seem to be uh, two schools of thought on the whole, uh, one of which uh, seems to be open the borders, uh, national borders don't count anyway, uh, we're all the same, give people jobs. And the other side uh, of the debate um, is people saying, well, hold on a minute, uh, we're a bit frightened about this, or we're a bit nervous about this. And, uh, you know, I think that this discussion ha has, uh, we will only achieve anything if this discussion becomes slightly less polarised. And if those on the one side uh, aren't automatically dismissed as being uh, racist, and those on the other side aren't automatically uh, dismissed as being um, activists, of uh, left, left wing activists of some sort or another. The political class uh, has on the whole ducked the whole issue of, uh, of migration in recent years. Um, and I would say that it has also consciously, as have many other people, ducked this issue of recognising the persistent scale or the scale of the persistent growth in Africa. I mean... I, it is pretty staggering. I mean, you know, one of the aims of the book is just to introduce the facts. It is by any stretch of the imagination, uh, extraordinary that between 1950 and 2050, uh, Africa's population will have increased by a little over 10 times. Now, in the century yep. when India went through its uh, substantial population growth, it increased by about four or five times. The same with Asia. Yeah. So we are looking at an issue of global significance. And, you know, I'm not purposely ducking the issue of, of migration. I'm just not an, an expert on how European politicians should solve this problem uh, because it is going to get larger. I'm not denying that. No, I, I, I think one of the great qualities of your book is actually its even handedness, which is why I think it's a great one for respectable politicians. I mean, not uh, unrespectable fellows like me, but respectable people in the Palace of Westminster to read and think about. And I hope they do uh, think about it, uh, Edward. And uh, if they do, I hope you'll get back to us and tell us what the political class is making of your book, because it's one, as you say, this is unprecedented. You know, there's been population growth in continents hither and yon throughout human history, but there's been nothing 
uh, like what has happened in Africa since 1950. And if you're sitting in a port in Libya and across the water there's Monte Carlo, the difference between what's north and what's south is going to occur to more and more people and it will be an issue for the rest of our lives.